Hi, my name is Ashley Wilson and I run an eco-friendly blog called MyGreenNest.com. Now today I'm going to show you a really cool palette project. It's a Hanging Kids palette bookshelf and my husband and I made it because our son, our one-year-old, he was uh, getting into the bookshelf that's on the floor and throwing all the books out and we didn't want them to get damaged. So I said, hey, let's make a hanging bookshelf so that he can't get to it. Also, I do want to apologize. I am a little bit late on getting this video out and some of the content. I am going to be 29 weeks pregnant Monday with my third child. So, you know, I've just been really tired. But I love the idea of palette projects because you're upcycling something that's old and making it into something new. And I find that to be a bit more eco-friendly. Since we're brand new to woodworking, this is only our second woodworking project, we did make some mistakes. And I will tell you about them as I document this video, but we're going to step you through everything really easy so you can make this exact bookshelf. Now, as a disclaimer, I do want you to know that we're not professionals. Make sure you're following the directions for your specific manual or power tool that you're using. Alright, enough about that. Let's go ahead and get to the video. I was lucky enough to find some free pallet wood from my parents' farm. We picked out the two best pallets that we could find for this project. Now you can get one to two shelves out of one pallet depending on how good your wood is and if you don't mess up too many times. Before we started working on the pallet, we had to remove these two boards on each end. Then we could cut straight down with a simple jigsaw that we got for around 25 or 30 bucks. I'll place the links in the description below for all the materials that we used in this video for the pallet shelf. My hubby used a crowbar and a mallet to remove the boards and it was pretty easy to remove it from the edges but the middle nails were not budging and our wood started splitting. That was kind of a bummer, but we continued until it was ready to cut. We used some chalk and marked where we would cut by using our level as a guide. Before using any power tools, it is important to use the proper safety gear, such as goggles and a dust mask. Now this was my husband's first time using the jigsaw and he did quite well. And I sat there in my comfy rocking chair adding moral support. Now this part was pretty easy and the wood came apart like a charm. After cutting out our shelves I quickly realized that our shelves were a little bit too long so we decided to cut one end off of each pallet shelf. We grabbed our level and I marked a straight line for my hubby to follow with the jigsaw and I made two darker lines on the starting and the ending spot for him to follow. We tried to make the edges as even as possible, even going back over it. Then we gently hammered in any nail heads that were sticking up too much. So you can see here that we ended up with two shelves out of one pallet. We cut the ends off of each one to make them shorter and now all we needed to do was cut some boards to screw into the bottom part. That way the books don't fall out. So for the first shelf, uh, we used the bottom boards out of the wood from the ends that we cut off. And for the second shelf, we dipped into the leftover pallet wood to make those bottom boards. It was getting darker at this time, so I switched to a white chalk pencil and uh, traced some cutting lines. That way it was easier to see. We turned the shelf upside down and placed the board flush on each side. Then I traced where we needed to cut it down again. We cut two bottom boards for both shelves. FYI, these are not perfectly even as pallet wood is already kind of janky to begin with. We did the best that we could and I chalked up the rest of the unevenness to the rustic look. Before adding the bottom boards in permanently, I took the time to sand out the wood on the inside of the pallet with a higher grit textured sanding bar. I also used an electric sander for the outside of the pallet shelves to speed the process up a little. Now we were just experimenting and we cut off the tall pieces on the second shelf, but after comparing the two, I actually liked the look of the tall pieces. So I decided to go ahead and finish that shelf and maybe down the road I'll finish the other one as well. I also sanded the bottom boards before screwing them into the shelf so it'd be a little bit easier. So now we came to the part where we needed to screw in the bottom boards. And let me tell you, we screwed up several times. First of all, we used some cheap screws that kept breaking on us. Found out after some research that we didn't drill big enough pilot holes. And since the wood was very hard, 
We also need to add some soap to the screws or rub on some soap on the screws before screwing them in. Now I got some great advice from a woodworking group on Facebook and they helped a ton after posting my project issues. I'll link this group in the description below so you can check them out. One of the members also shared with me a handy little chart that shows what size pilot holes to use for different size screws and for soft and hardwood. I'll also link a very helpful video that I found about the proper way of screwing into wood if you're a newbie like us. Now when we went back and re-drilled the pilot holes and made them a little bigger and rubbed some soap on the screws, he was able to use a hand screwdriver and screw in everything correctly. We had to remove the broken and stripped screws with some vice grips. Now if I was to do this project again, I would suggest using some wood glue um, on your boards before screwing in the bottom boards. Now once we got the screws and everything assembled, it was time to finish up the project. I tapped heavily on the wood while wearing a dust mask to help remove any sawdust. Then I went over everything with a damp washcloth and let it dry. We decided that we wanted to stain the wood with a water-based dark walnut and use one of these cheap foam brushes to apply the stain. Now when I stain or do projects, I like to cut up old t-shirts and use those as rags to wipe any drips away or wipe the stain away if it's too dark. Now I couldn't find both of my heavy duty kitchen gloves so I just used one and I was very careful and it helped to keep the stain off of my hands while applying it. Now I suggest if you're going to stain anything, have the doors open or be out in your garage on a nice day and wear a protective mask, which I'll link in the description below if you want to check out this one. And this keeps you from inhaling toxic fumes. I started coating the entire shelf with my stain. It only needed one layer as it was actually darker than I expected, but it still turned out really pretty. We let everything dry for a couple of days because it was a little bit humid and rainy. Now after staining, you can pretty much stop here and hang it up if you want. But I decided I wanted to make my piece a little more unique and paint on some text with a paint marker. I just typed in the text story time with a font that I liked on an app called Font Candy. And I freehand copied it onto the board with a white charcoal pencil while looking at my phone. And this allowed me if I made any mistakes I could wipe it away with a wet rag. Once I got it the way I liked, I filled it in with this exact paint marker that I got from Hobby Lobby. I used a little piece of paper to get the paint marker going, just slowly felt it in and I was very careful on this part. Now if you're not good at freehanding, feel free to have an artist friend do this part for you or you can use a stencil or even copy it on with carbon paper. My best friend does the carbon paper method for all of her projects and her text turns out really well. Once the font dried, I went over it a few more times until I was happy with the look. I decided to add a single layer of water-based polyurethane just to keep the wood a little more protected. Again, you can skip this part if you want. Or you can continue adding layers of polyurethane to make it more glossy and more protected. It's all up to you. I lightly sanded everything before and after using the poly with a 220 grit sandpaper just to give it a little softer feel. Then I wiped the excess dust with a damp washcloth. My husband and I were very happy with how this palette shelf turned out. And I think it's really cute and we can pass it down to one of our kids one day to use for their kids. The only thing that we had left to do was drill two pilot holes in the wood so that we can hang it up. We decided to use these hardcore drywall screws that we got from Lowe's. We checked our wall for studs, but there were none where we were trying to hang this piece up. So that's why we had to go with the drywall screws. My husband and I finally got it mounted onto the wall and we really loved it. What do you guys think? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to be doing more DIY stuff in the future. And I hope to catch you guys in the next video.